Hi, my name is Ryan Languish, and this is Ludo Lodge, a channel about sparking growth for game designers. And today I'm just going to be doing a quick tutorial about how to use snap points in Tabletop Simulator. Now by snap points, I just mean that Tabletop Simulator is going to automatically move components to fall right into place, whether that's into a space where a component should go, um, or just other places on the table where you want something to kind of fit specifically into a certain spot. And Tabletop Simulator makes this very easy to do, um, and I think it's one of just kind of the easiest things you can do in your prototypes um, to increase the ease of use and just make a smoother play experience um, for people who are going to be playing with you. Um, so let's jump right in. I'm going to create just a cube to use kind of for some of our testing here. Um, and the first, I'm going to just make this a little bigger here, and the first thing I'm going to mention is there, there's kind of a couple ways to, to get um, snapping to points working. The first of which is to actually do it through the built-in grid. So if we go up into options and go to grid, there's technically always a grid that's in effect across the table. And if we click show lines, we can actually see it. Um, it's off by default. And that grid can be changed to be hexagonal or stay with just the squares. Um, and you can change some other options with how it appears, but we see this option for snapping down here, which is off by default. What this means is if we switch it to lines, for example, objects that we drop near the intersection of two lines are going to automatically snap to center on that intersection. So if we click this and we click out of here and maybe zoom in on our cube, if I drop this near the intersection, you can see it just perfectly snaps to go to that intersection. Similarly, we could do that um, with center, which means it would snap to the center of the squares, or you could do both if you wanted to be able to snap to either of lo those locations. And obviously we could change things like the grid size um, to get it maybe what matches um, your components in your game. So this might be a good option if you want a very universal snapping across the entire table. Maybe you have a game where um, it's going to be kind of freeform how tiles or cards get splayed out and, and expanded on the table, and you want them always to, to snap to this universal grid. Um, if you're not looking for something that's going to cover the entire table, then you're probably going to want to use the built-in snap points as opposed to implementing it through the grid. So let's go ahead and turn this off and let's look at the point tool. So if we look over in this left menu, the very last option here is the option for points. Um, and there's a few different options here. There's snap points, rotate snap points, and then delete all snap points. So let's just quick draw um, some spaces here that we're going to use as kind of our example. So suppose we had kind of like an arbitrary path of spaces that we wanted this cube to, you know, snap, snap to those spots um, when we drop near it. If we go into our point tool and select snap, you'll notice your cursor changes to this little magnet. And the left side of that magnet is going to be where I click and can drop these little green points now. Um, and I can click these all over the table. If I click an existing one and drag it, I can move it around and place it maybe more precisely. And if I click on one and release that exists already, it'll delete the snap point. So if I now add these to the center of my squares, and you know maybe I set it offset and then I can just drag it into place. When I click away from the point tool, those are all going to disappear because they're not going to be visible while you're playing the game. However, when I drop this cube near here, it now snaps perfectly um, to that point to center on the point that I dropped there. So this is obviously um, useful. Um, however, there's an important thing to know about kind of the process we just went through with um, the points, which is that these points by default are anchored to the table itself. Um, and what that means is suppose you want to add like a player board into the game and that player board has spots where they want to snap. If we just do it like we did right now, it's going to still by default anchor those points to the table instead of anchoring them to your board. So let's actually look at an example of that. So if I go to components and I'm going to just import a board as a custom tile with my top image being example board. So we'll upload this um, and import. 
So we've got this board here. Um, I'll just make it a little bigger with the plus key um, and we'll adjust this to be a better size as well. Um, suppose I wanted, you know, this square to snap into these one, two, three spaces so that players don't have to drop it as precisely. I would maybe go to the point tool and pick my snap point and I would want to put a snap point right here but it's actually going to throw it way over here, right in the center of the board. And you'll notice if I click anywhere on the board, it doesn't add any points. It just keeps this one right in the center. And what Tabletop Simulator is doing here is by default, when you click on a component adding a snap point, it's going to add a snap point at the exact center of that component. And that snap point is going to be anchored to the table, not the board. And what I mean by that is if I would go here, and move this board and come back, you'll notice the snap point just got left behind because it's anchored to the table. It's not actually anchored to the board. Now that's not what we want, right? That's not very useful. We want these spots. One, I want to be able to define specific spots on the board, not just the center of it. And two, I want it to be able to move with the board even um, you know, if I move it around the table, um, I should still have those snap points apply. So let's delete this and bring our board back. And the key to adding snap points to a component as opposed to anchoring it to the table is you need to first lock that component. So if you right click a component and go to toggles, you notice there's a lock option here, which you can also use um, L is the shortcut key for that. Um, and if I click this to lock it, now I can no longer move this um, piece here, like it's locked into place. However, if I go and use the point tool now, you'll notice that I can now click all over this um, and it doesn't just add them to the center, it adds them to where I'm actually clicking. So this allows me to now put those right where I want them um, on my oops, board here. So put these here roughly where I want them to be and I'll put this here for my, my next example. And so now if I drop this cube in, I get it to do the nice snapping that I desire. Additionally, suppose we unlocked this and moved it. If we check our points again, we can see those points all moved with the board. And that's because, because the points were put when the board was locked, it anchored them to that component itself and they'll now move as children of that component. Additionally, if I would copy and paste this component, you know, maybe I want more boards for all the players, those snap points copy as well um, and are considered now children of that component. Um, so you don't have to go through the work of, you know, setting up all those snap points again. So this is very useful and this is maybe kind of the most common way that you're going to be using snap points um, is on things like, like boards. And so the key thing to remember is always lock the component first to add snap points. And then you can unlock it later, like the snap points will still work and move with the component once it's unlocked. You just need it locked when you're actually adding the snap points. So the last topic I want to talk about um, is rotate snap. Now rotate snap works pretty much exactly like a normal snap point, but it goes one step further in that it's going to specifically rotate the component according to a specific predefined rotation. So you can see in this example, I have this spot that looks like an arrow. And if I go and import here a custom, I'm going to use a token because a token can actually be an irregular shape instead of a tile that can just be a, you know, a square, a circle, or a hexagon. Um, and I'm going to import my arrow here. And I'm going to give it a nice chunky thickness. Uh, and I'm going to use a lower merge distance, which just means it's going to cut out that shape a little more accurately. So if I import this, oops, we can see we have this nice, oops, I accidentally um, brought in a figurine. Um, I have this nice chunky arrow here now that I can rotate around. Um, and let's actually reduce the size there a little bit with the minus key to get it to where it'll match our um, spot here, roughly. Um, so we can see now that our, our snap point that we added there earlier works. It can snap right into place. However, if I had this facing a different direction, it would snap, but it's not going to you know, match up with where it should go. Now, unless you're just a masochist when you play games that would 
put a thing in this spot without rotating it. Um, it's much nicer to have it rotate into place and have it match up and satisfy um, OCD people like me. So Tabletop Simulator gives you the ability to do this built in, and that's going to be by using snap points. Um, so before we add our snap point, remember we're going to want to lock this component because otherwise it's just going to throw that snap point right in the middle. Um, and I'm going to first get rid of this one, and then I'm going to click to get rid of this menu. Um, and I'm now going to use a rotate snap. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to add that kind of in the same spot. And you'll notice this looks a little different. And if I now drag this on top of it, it not only snaps, but it throws the rotation to match the rotation that is defined, which right now is just to the left. Um, so what I can do to adjust that is use these little arrow keys here to adjust the rotation, which are a little misleading because they both point clockwise, but only the red one goes clockwise and the blue one actually goes counterclockwise. Um, but you can use these to adjust your rotation. Um, so let's see if I guess that roughly. I overshot by one. Um, so if I go back here and I bump that back one, we should expect now that I, regardless of what rotation I have this in, if I throw it here, it's gonna snap and it's gonna rotate to fit that spot, which is extremely satisfying, I must say. Um, so this is a useful thing. You could use it, you know, for anything like this that's a specific shape that you want it to fit a spot that's also that shape. You could also use it, like, if you have a, maybe a path or a board in your game that um, has an implied direction, you could make the figures moving along that automatically turn to face along the direction of the path, regardless of how it's oriented, which is just kind of a nice thing to be able to do. Um, so these things I've talked about... Uh, basically give you all the tools you need to be able to add snap points to your game for pretty much any kind of scenario or use case I can think of. Um, so hopefully this was useful. Hopefully, maybe if you haven't used these before, it seems like something that you could easily add into your games. I mean, we're really talking a few minutes and you can make a big difference in just the feel of playing your prototype um, in Tabletop Simulator. If you enjoyed this video, um, consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this and, and leave any comments down below of things that you'd like to see. I'd like to make more videos that would be valuable for people. Um, so if there's topics that you'd like to see explained and kind of shown visually, um, I'd, I'd love to get that, that on my uh, list of things to cover. Thanks for, thanks for checking this one out and I'll see you in the next video.